I really always liked science, even as a young kid. I was always actually in advanced mathematics ever since second grade. Uh, I've been acting for the past 10 years. Um, I am currently living and traveling aboard a boat. When you're a musician and you love what you do, music is really all you want to do. Every child has something within them that sparkles. And that the challenge uh, of a teacher is to find out what is that extraordinary thing and to cultivate it and to draw it out. where people are excited about learning. They do their reading for English class or they work their problems for chemistry, not because it's required, but because it's actually interesting. We want to discuss it with all of our friends. Um, ben alluded to this last class, this, this social dimension to identity, right? When people hear about an online high school, they immediately think socialization problems. But the model of online they have is the model of most online education, which is totally asynchronous. The students are just watching lectures and emailing a teacher. So the first thing is that we meet in classes, right? We, we talk to each other. We, we all come to class. We just happen to come to a virtual class. Is Kafka presenting a dualist view of the mind or, or a materialist one? It's, it, you have a parallel discussion that's happening uh, between responses in audio and video and textual interaction between all of the students in the class all at once. So it's, it's really not a situation where you you're in a lecture hall and you're listening to the teacher. I think the most productive way to work through a literary work is to, to discuss it in small groups. They listen to the lectures ahead of time, they do their reading ahead of time, they do their homework ahead of time, and so now they come to their discussion section to discuss, and the professors are there to get them engaged in the, in the work, and they're learning from one another in the different points of view. Bringing together the students with their talents and also their different perspectives into an uh, intellectual community is something that the school does uniquely well. Even though he knew most of the answers, he encouraged others to volunteer solutions and participate in class. Congratulations. <laughs> students come from all over. There are students in 42 states and almost 30 countries. I have friends in China, California, India. There's really nothing like being able to hear a student from Sweden talk about the Swedish democratic system versus a student from the United States and then a student who may be looking at it from a different angle uh, in China or other parts of Asia. You bring all those perspectives together, you get this amazing melting pot of ideas in the classroom. Yeah, tell them what it is. <laughs> We have this thing called the core program, where it's four, four years worth of courses, one course a year that's mandatory for all OHS students. The first year is a field biology course, the second is a history of science, the third a political science, and the fourth a moral philosophy course. Basically high schoolers learn about philosophy and about the examined life and about sort of thinking critically and rigorously. When I was in the History of Science course. We all wrote 25 page papers, not because we wanted to impress the teacher or we wanted to send it to colleges, but because we were so in love with the topics. That's not to say that there aren't challenges. It's stressful, it's difficult, and there will be roadblocks, but those hurdles are worth it because you get to be a part of this community. You meet people who are doing things that are so unbelievably cool. You had no idea a high schooler was doing this. OHS was a bit of a shock when I first came in, but the hard classes were really, really fun because they were challenging me and I hadn't been challenged in a while. There is a spirit of this is going to be really hard, you should try and make it harder. See if you can beat that even greater challenge. And they're feisty. They will argue, they will debate, they will call you out if they think something doesn't make sense. And so I'm always learning from my students here and I really, really enjoy that. These teachers actually have PhDs or master's degrees in what they do, and that just reflects a love of the subject that they teach. So they're obviously very open about sharing their knowledge. You know, they can answer all the straightforward questions in their conventional classroom, and what our teachers can add to their experience is asking the follow-up question uh, to think about the larger context in which they're maintaining that position. It's remarkable that a young person at 15 years old is being asked, what is your discourse based on what you're learning and understanding? 
It's not really about the grade you get at the end of the OHS. It's really about the teachers and the process that you go through. So it's quite a different experience, and you can connect with people who love what you love. Probably around third grade or so, she began to become more introverted as uh, she realized a lot of her fellow students didn't share the same interests that she did academically. As she started meeting more and more kids at the online high school, that started to change. It started to come back to her old self. So that was, we thought that was an extreme benefit to this program. The students have all their kinds of venues for socialization as well. They have regional meetups where they get together. They watch movies together. You can form a club if you get a faculty sponsor, and it can be about basically anything you want. I started the astronomy club at the school. We'd meet once every two weeks and talk about everything from the discovery of the Higgs boson particle to Star Trek versus Star Wars. I ran a weekend of regional meetups to help students who didn't know each other meet each other. And I think that for being online, we really have a very involved, active, and interested community of people. It wasn't easy for our teachers when we could solve complex problems in our heads, but struggled to grasp the basic logistics of submitting assignments on time. And yet you accepted our eccentricities, and often appreciated them like nobody else had. OHS helps us become who we are truly meant and aim to be if we put into the equation the same degree of dedication and good faith that the faculty and staff do put in us each day that they continue to provide us a premier education. Can I work in this environment? Can I, can I manage my own deadlines? Can I work on these really difficult assignments? This is a challenge that I feel like everyone should be offered. OHS is about giving students the opportunity to pursue outside interests, academic or otherwise, for instance, in my case, travel. Everyone at the OHS has this deep and abiding passion for knowledge. When you come to the OHS, you realize that it's not about what you learn, it's about improving your skills so that you can be set up for a life of learning.